Hey everyone, it's Jack. And today I want to ramble on a little bit and give you some doggerel about why I am warming up to window managers. And as you might have noticed in a previous video, I've been running Hyperlint lately. And Hyperlint is a Windows manager which I have been kind of experimenting with because it's based on Wayland. I have had issues with Wayland in the past and they seem to have pretty much all cleared up. So that's one reason I started living in Hyperlin for a while. And so I kind of want to see how it's like. And Hyperlin has actually helped reinforce the thought that window managers are really efficient. And that's something I'm just kind of recently discovering. I've always been a standard desktop kind of person running desktops like KDE and XFCE, Cinnamon, you know, Budgie and so forth. And I've never really strayed from that paradigm. Or is it paradigm? Anyway, I always felt like window managers were a little bit of a waste of time. I mean, to set up a desktop environment on a window manager and having to do all that scripting and configuring yourself was really, to me, kind of senseless. I thought, why would you invest the time to do all that? I mean, it's fun to customize and in a hobby perspective, that's fun too. And if it's based on a programming language that you really like, like Haskell or Python or whatever, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a hobbyist kind of fun thing to do, but just to get something set up and just have it work because you just want to get down to business. Well, to me, it just didn't make a lot of sense. Although it's making more sense now because you can actually, once you got your script down, just run your script and just have it up and running in no time. So this is my latest Hyperlin setup here. And what I actually did was I ran a script uh, from somebody called uh, Sal something. I got to bring up my Firefox because I got his website still in one of my gazillion tabs that I have open. So I'm just going to switch over to desktop too. And that's the other thing I really like is how these workspaces are organized. I don't use multi-monitors mostly. I, I do have two monitors that I have hooked up right now, and I do have them mirrored, which I'll get into a little bit here soon. But I really like how the workspaces are managed. And if I was running multi-monitors, I can't really comment on how that works with Hyperlin at the moment because I haven't really uh, hooked up two or three monitors to really mess with it because I kind of prefer a single monitor, just keep everything consolidated. <laughs> anyway, the script guy I was talking about, Sal Does Tech. So he's got a website, so he's got a YouTube channel actually, which I left in the description below. And Sal Does Tech has come up with these Hyperlens scripts that are really great. And so what I did was I installed Base Arch. Uh, actually, I used the Arch ISO, Arch install and just did a, a base Arch install and then ran the Hyper-V script right from the console there. And so what it did was I ran the Hyper-V4. This is his fourth version of the Hyperlin script. And you can actually scroll through all the previous versions of the layouts uh, with a simple keyboard command. And so I have it hooked up right now with Super-V and I think that was the default anyway. And I'm in the version three layout right now because that's actually kind of my favorite layout, but I could actually cycle through the other layouts. This is the latest layout, which is the version four layout. And that's how this looks. So we got our bar up on top and then on the bottom, we have our weather widget, which I really like. This is very cool. Uh, WTTR.in for Waybar. And it is running Waybar, by the way. And then I can just keep scrolling. This is actually the version one layout here. And then we got version two, which is also quite nice. And version three. And version three is the one I've been using the most, uh, mainly just because I think my applications have the most screen space this way. So I kind of like that. So this is the layout I've been kind of going with running this script. But this script really kind of made Hyperlin nice to install. And then from there, I kind of modified it with my own key bindings and so forth. So that I was liking a lot. And again, I can just have different things open on different workspaces. And I actually assigned a couple of these to open up on specific workspaces. So for example, my when I launch my browser, it automatically opens up on Workspace 2. And then I got my MetaTrader 5 here on Workspace 3. And that automatically opens up on Workspace 3 as well. And again, feeling very efficient and smooth. 
And then, of course, I can come back here to my workspace one, which is where I started, and I'm going to shrink. There, that'll help me to be quite out of the way. So then here on my first desktop is where I, I typically run my other stuff, like uh, maybe just open up my console or if I need to use Thunar or something like that, I would just do that right here. So just with a simple key binding, I just open up my console and oh, I haven't installed color script yet. That's uh, DT's bash color script, which I really like. So I'm gonna have to put that in there, but it is really nice to have the console right here. And then if I need to refer to something, then I can do that very quickly just by opening up, say my file manager, and then I got instant reference to it. So if I wanna modify, say something in here, and I like to keep notes on different uh, modifications that I do, so that way I can refer back to them in the future. And so that is another, area where this is handy because I could come over here to documents and I could just open up a document uh, with my notes in it. And then once that's open, then I got my notes right here, got my file manager here and my console right here. So everything's right here, right handy. So I can come in and look at these notes. And if I have to edit something, then here I got my notes here and I can just simply copy and paste into, for example, my config file. So like, here's an issue where Every time I ran my way bar, it would duplicate. Whenever I made a modification to my hyperlink config file, then way bar would relaunch again and it would be on top of my old way bar. And then if I had made another modification, I'd have three way bars and they just kept replicating. And I was like, what? So if I have to refer back to this in the future, maybe with a fresh comp file, I can just copy this guy, come over here and paste it right into my terminal. Actually, I'd want to vim that. So I could open that up in Vim, and then here I am, and I, everything is right here. It's just handy. So I don't really have to flip back and forth between Windows, which I really like. And it looks like I got a swap open here, so I'm just going to hit Edit, E to edit anyway. And so now I can just kind of scroll down to where I need to fix things and just do my thing. So in this case, we had exact equals Waybar, and so it was opening Waybar every time I made a change. So I changed it to exec once equals way bar. So I simply came down here and changed the line to exec once, which is right here. So that solved that problem for me. But again, efficiency, it was, uh, everything's right here. So I can just have everything right at a glance and much more efficient than having all the floating windows where one window's on top of another and I got to resize and position them side by side and so forth. So. This to me feels a lot more clean and efficient and quick. And it just makes my workflow that much smoother. And so that's something I've really have been discovering that I just really never bothered to experience in the past. So how cool is that? And again, the open things I have here, I can just switch between them. Um, Super two to my second desktop workspace. Super three to my third. And here I got my MetaTrader open because I'm still playing with that with the FTMO prop firm. So this is another kind of trial thing I'm doing just for fun. That's actually what was open here originally was here. And so I'm actually on the last day of this one and did quite well, blew right past the profit target there. And so everything went just fine with that. And my metrics are real happy today. I did a quick 480.40 in about a half an hour. So that was fun and passed all the requirements. And then these are all the days, 10 days total there in the trial. And so every day is nice and green, just the way I like it, my favorite color. So it was a lot of fun. And then here they even give you a breakdown of everything that you do. And of course the green are the good ones, are the winners and the reds are the losers, but every day averaged out to good profits. So it's just total fun. <laughs> uh, I kind of look at this like running a retail business and a retail business, you know, I would look at all these as being sales, everything in green and everything in red being refunds and maybe other miscellaneous expenses. So as long as your sales are outnumbering your refunds and so forth, then it's all good. So I kind of look at it like running a business. And this was a day where uh, I really had a rough start and then it just kind of picked right up and ended up in a few hundred dollars profit. So yeah, even a rough morning can 
he can roll out of it and, and come out smelling like a rose if you know how to manage things. And that's really the key to everything, management. And so here it's got like five pages and it's just really very thorough. You can just kind of keep track of everything. And I really like that. So this is something I've really become a fan of. And I think probably I'm going to do this one more time and then I'm going to go for the real challenge. <laughs> I mean, why not? Once you know the ropes, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer. Onward and upward. So the fact that I can switch between workspaces so quickly, and there's me on all my different open apps, I really like that. And to me, it's just so much more efficient to have these workspaces and everything on the workspaces. And I know on, say, XFCE or KDE, you can also uh, put things on the different desktops, but it just feels more streamlined here. And of course, window managers with your different workspaces will assign them to different monitors as well. So for a multi-monitor setup, it's really quite ideal to use something like a window manager. And I've been trying a bunch of them here lately, like i3 and Qtile, awesome. Xmonad, of course, because it's Derek that really got me started on all this with DTOS and the Xmonad. I got in there and started learning my way around his desktop environment because I think his host install script there for Arch is so cool. I mean, wow. It just took all the intimidation factor out of setting up a window manager, especially something like Xmonad. If I would have done that from scratch and then had to start with a base config, uh, I think that would have took enough wind out of my sails to just say, ah, forget it. Unless I just had a lot of spare time and I just stuck it on a laptop and decided to just kind of play with it because I was bored but I don't have much time to be bored lately. So that kind of wasn't an option for me. So things like DTOS and these pre-install, post-install scripts and pre-made scripts for me are a real plus. And so I guess if I was ever going to window manager hop, the, the pre-installed scripts like the one put out by Sal Does Tech or Hyperlin really just makes a huge difference. And those are the kind of things I guess I'd want to use. <laughs> for my situation. And like I said, Waylon, you really hasn't been giving me any issues. Here I keep notes here where I can do little things uh, that I've been experiencing in Waylon. So, so things like uh, adding a weather widget, uh, which already came with this script, so I didn't have to do that. But, you know, I have notes on how to modify it. Um, showing image previews in Kitty Terminal, that was something that uh, I thought was kind of cool too. So you can use Ranger and Kitty supports image previews uh, natively, which is really great. So Kitty and Ranger works great here in Hyperland. I haven't had any issues there. And I got some notes on configuring the RC comp for Ranger there for Kitty. And of course, that's on the GitHub website anyway, so that's easy peasy. And random color scripts in the terminal. I noticed that when I open this up, I'm going to jump out of my config real quick. So I'm just going to colon Q out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm still using Vim. I'm making good on my 30-day commitment to Vim. And so far, I'm really liking it, by the way. Just a little side note. So back to this color script command not found. I'm going to install that since I'm right here. And again, this will just demonstrate the efficiency of being in the tiling window manager. So I'm just going to do yay shell scripts. That's what we got here. And I'm just going to copy that from my cons, from my notes there and paste it into my kitty console and we'll just go ahead and install that and it says there's nothing to do hmm. oh i forgot to hit the number <laughs> i guess i could have done yay s but anyways i gotta select it first forgot to do that so yeah i wondered what was going on i knew it wasn't installed so now i got shell scout color scripts now i'm kind of feeling more like my install is complete so i'm gonna let that install just put in my password here and go with yes and now we should be good so now all i gotta do is just reload my bash rc so i'm gonna type in source dot bash rc and there it is we got our color scripts so now if I clear out the terminal, or if I just, or if I even just close it, it should open up with our color scripts now. So I'll close it and then open up my terminal again. And there it is, except I want it, my terminal where it was before. So I'm going to press my Windows key and just kind of drag it up here. Actually, I'm going to take this guy and drag it over here. There we go. And now I got my terminal with DT's cool color scripts. Excellent. So there we go. I think I just about yapped about everything I wanted to yap about because I'm a yapper. So I just had to kind of share all that with you there. I just wanted to um, kind of express how nice it is to have this efficiency in the window managers. So this is something I've just overlooked for 
all these years just because I didn't really think it was worth the time. And uh, when I started coming across, it was actually DT or Derek over there at DistroTube that kind of opened my eyes to like his post install script and then realizing that there are people out there that do have install scripts for different window managers. And uh, it's really, if you're not familiar with window managers, then having an install script like that is really nice. Or even just copying someone's config that they're sharing. That way you can kind of just put something in there that's already set up the way you might like it or close. And then you have a reference that you can learn from. It's a nice base model because sometimes the default configs can be pretty bare bones and they may not include a bar like a poly bar or way bar or whatever the situation might be for your window manager. And so then it comes down to having to set all that up. And so you can spend a lot of time just getting your desktop built with a simple bar and then configured the way you want of if you're not familiar with window managers. And so that's kind of the thing that always had put me off in the past. So I think all I needed was a nudge in the right direction. And it was Derek that gave me that nudge initially and got me to explore more of these. So now not only can I desktop hop, but I can window manager hop too. Although I got a lot to say for Hyperland. I think Hyperland is just, it's got everything that I like. It's got the bling and the animation effects. It's got my beautiful weather app down here that I can hover over. And I like this a lot. This weather app is beautiful for weather bar using WTTR.N for Wayland. And that's just something you could actually yay out of the AUR and install if you don't already have it configured. In this case, using Sal's script there, it was already built in. So all I had to do was just modify it and put my town in there so I could have it tweaked for my location. But other than that, easy peasy, done deal. So am I going to live in this for a while? Heck yeah. I like Hyperland. I just might use this for maybe quite a long time. And I still love my XFCE desktop and so forth. But for now, the efficiency here uh, makes me almost think that I don't know if I want to go back because I really like this efficiency and I found out it's okay to use keyboard shortcuts. I was always kind of just so st stuck on the idea that your mouse was the height of efficiency and that using keyboard bindings was like more work, but I'm starting to discover it's a lot less work because my workflow is so much smoother this way that to me, it's kind of hard to picture going back now. Never thought I'd say that. So anyway, I had a lot of fun sharing with this with you. And if you thought it was worthwhile, my rambling, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.